Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in retirement with having. We do this by being loving and kind to people. We do this by doing things that are called listening with people. When we listen with people, we're actually hearing their soul. We're knowing what they want. We listen about their profession. We look for people to help them, and we openly help them along their life goals, not ours. You see, networking in America today is pretty good still to a point. But the hardest part about networking today is the concept of illness. You see, illness is something that everybody faces every day, even before we had this pandemic and epidemic called COVID. And these new strands that seem to be coming and releasing every day. How scary for us. But the truth is our whole life, our whole beginning of end of life, are something that faces disease and illness everywhere. We can pick up anything at any time if God allows it. But here's the real problem and the real rub, is that when we have these networking groups, these social groups, these online networks, these social cliques, we have a real risk to being caught up in illness. You see, stalking of a person's life and attacking a person's life and abusing a person's life is actually an illness. People who use technology to abuse a life have an illness within them because they are thinking that they are powerful in their technological skills when really they're not. They're actually just bullies with a tool. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth about what is and isn't real, and the liars of America like to do things that are immoral to other people that they really have no right to do at all, and they know it. They absolutely know that they're being abusive. They absolutely know that they're raising someone. They absolutely know that they're harassing someone. They absolutely know that they're cutting someone's beard in a hate crime. They absolutely know that they've taken someone out of their clothes immorally and illegally and illicitly to do something worse to them that they shouldn't be doing to them at all. We know that abusers in America and around the world exist, but what are we going to do about them? We have to cure their illness. And their illness starts in the earliest ages and stages of life. It usually is brought about by a monster parent that did nothing right in the rearing of that child between ages 0 and 3. And openly, I fault the parents to a point in that period of time when the personality we all know from the research of history of education of children is set by 3. You see, if you want a good child, then you start working with the child when they're a baby. You start loving on that child. You start singing to that child. You start playing classical music around that child when they're going to sleep. You make sure they get a healthy diet. You make sure they get full enough food so that they end up their proper weight with the proper mind functioning every day. You also protect them from the rain, from the storm, from the elements, from their little brothers or little sisters with monstrous hands that get jealous. And you openly do this very zealously and very carefully. And especially if there's stepchildren around, especially if there are adoptees around, and all of a sudden you've got this miraculous baby with you, you better be careful because by the age of two, he can be a monster in the world today. We have to be careful about what we teach our children, but we also have to be looking at what do our children learn from us every day? What kind of behavior do they learn? What kind of mouthpiece do they learn? What kind of language, my God, do they learn? I cannot get over it when I'm hearing a little five or eight-year-old running around with the F word every day. Now, in the last year, I've been definitely practicing that wonderful, marvelous world, both in Japanese and in English. But what I'm telling you, motherfuckers, is that we have to be careful about what we say, which is why this is not a PG-13 podcast or audio cast at all. It's more NC-17 and possibly older, but the truth is I'm really just trying to bother you because you've been bothering me. The concept of illness is thinking you've got rights to another human being's paperwork, which is their legal documents, property, which are their possessions or their presence that they receive from you or me, and their personhood, which is their absolute total body of what you see and what you're not allowed to see. You see, in life we have privacy rights. We also have medical privacy rights. And if you have violated HIPAA law as a position in one of those type of situations and gone home and gossiped on it all, you literally should go to jail today. But more importantly, if you've spread that information across your social network without justification, without proper authority, without permission from that individual, you really deserve to go to hell today. That is your illness. Gossip is your illness. Slander is an illness. Taking people's medical rights and privacy rights away from them is an illness. Trying to be in power over someone's body, their hairstyle, their fashion, their clothes sizing, 
anything like that is an illness. And you motherfuckers are ill today because your gossip throws people away today. Every soul is important to God. Every human being is important to God. All Lives Matter is a really good name for the new campaign. Because while Black Lives Matter, enough black people have been abusing people too through this day. But All Lives Matter changes the perspective. All Lives Matter means that every single one of our races and nations of people that came to America to create a better life, an all better life, did struggle, went through sacrifices, went through convictions, went through challenges, went through social challenges, went through networks, went through business, whatever it was they had to do in order to thrive.